Dear friends, dear colleagues, uh, hello, and welcome to a session that deals uh, with one of the hot topics of uh, the year, which is uh, HPR, high bleeding risk, and how to handle the DAPT in patients uh, undergoing uh, PCI. My name is Davide Capodanno. I'm an interventional cardiologist working in Italy. Today, I'm very pleased to moderate this session where uh, we will hear from uh, investigators in this field, and uh, we will understand uh, what are the latest findings. And uh, we will have also some updates on an important upcoming uh, uh, trial. For these objectives, uh, I'm very pleased to count on the expertise of uh, Dr. Ken Kozuma, Pieter Smith, and Marco Valgimigli, and I would like to welcome them, first of all. So uh, the HPR concept now is quite well defined. We have uh, uh, ARC definitions that have been published last year in circulation in the European ARC journal. We have also an upcoming set of advices on how to design from a regulatory perspective, uh, HPR uh, uh, trials of devices and uh, uh, drugs. So these patients in practice are very difficult uh, to treat because we know that the vast proportion of them uh, has not just uh, high bleeding risk, but also high thrombotic risk. So it's very important to understand uh, with real data how it's going on with uh, these patients. And uh, to that objective, uh, I would like to start by asking Dr. Uh, Kozuma uh, one question, because uh, he has presented as late-breaking science uh, uh, to the e-course uh, uh, a sub-study of the model USES uh, uh, trial, uh, which is focusing uh, especially in patients uh, with HPR. So I would like to know uh, what you have learned from the study and what are the implications uh, for practice. Thank you very much, Dr. Capodano. Uh, and also, thank you for giving me this great, great opportunity to present my uh, model use study. And model use study is a prospective all-comer registry to evaluate a safety of three months depth after implantation of Artemaster stent. 1,695 patients were enrolled based on the sample size calculation of non-inferiority design uh, as a comparator of uh, Century 2 trial, which was pivotal trial of Artemisia stent. And primary endpoint was a composite endpoint of all cause death, myocardial infarction, stroke, and stent thrombosis, and severe bleeding, back three or five. And three months after was uh, demonstrated as non-inferior to adjusted cohort of longer depth of Century 2 trial in net adverse clinical events. And secondary objective, but my major interest was to investigate the appropriateness of PDY12 inhibitor monotherapy, comparing with aspirin monotherapy after three months. PDY12 inhibitor monotherapy was not different from the aspirin monotherapy after three months in both bleeding and thrombotic events although this analysis was not powered for this comparison. This HBR substudy was a retrospective analysis of model uses. Because ARC-HBR was published last year after the completion of this study. Therefore, data on some criteria are missing in the database, such as liver cirrhosis or breathing diastasis. As presented in the slide, main factors of HBR are elderly, chronic kidney disease, anemia, oral anticoagulant, active cancer, and prior stroke. And indeed, half of patients fulfill the criteria of HBR. And this slide shows the main results of this sub-study. Composite major adverse events were three times higher in HBR group than non-HBR group. It is of note that both ischemic and bleeding clinical events were much higher in HBR patients than non-HBR patients. So we need to pay attention to the ischemic events as well as bleeding in HBR patients. Although this analysis was not powered for this comparison, at least we can see the equivalency of aspirin monotherapy and PDY12 inhibitor monotherapy after three months in both HBR group and non-HBR group. 
In HBR group, P2A12 inhibitor monotherapy may be better if the number of subjects was sufficient. So I'd like to summarize this study as follows. First, half of the population was stratified as HBR, as well as other real-world studies in Japan. Second, incidence of ischemic event was much higher in HBR patients than non-HBR patients. I think this is a very important point to assess short depth studies. And finally, aspirin monotherapy may not be appropriate and p 2 12 inhibitor monotherapy may be better for the high ischemic risk patients, which are the majority of HBR patients. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kozuma. I think this is new and important data uh, in an uh, area where we do not have too much data. So I wonder how this information now fits into the ongoing landscape of uh, HPR trials. And I would like to ask uh, Marco to quickly summarize for us uh, what evidence is out there in HPR trials and what should we expect in the near future in this area? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, David. A, a privilege for me to do so. We have had so far uh, three studies, namely ZEUS, HBR, Leaders Free, and more recently Onyx One, asking a very specific uh, stent question, namely which stent technology should be preferred in HBR patients who are supposed to be managed with one month DBT. Now, the outcome of these three studies is very consistent and the winner has always been the active technology. However, it's very important to emphasize that these three studies did not ask a specific DPT duration question. That's why we have a set of so-called single arm registries whereby HBR patients are being treated with the specific DS technology and then exposed to a short-term DPT consisting of either one or three months DPT duration. Now, the comparator ARBs in these single arm registries by protocol will be provided by an historical cohort of patients who did receive the same stent technology, but was subsequently exposed to standard DPT duration, meaning at least six, but most frequently actually one full year DPT uh, regimen. Now, these studies, of course, will provide important comparative uh, effectiveness and safety data with respect to short DPT versus a longer DPT regimen. However, it's, I think, very fair to emphasize that the gold standard uh, still today remains randomization for answering critical questions like this one. Thank you, Marco. Yes, uh, randomization is uh, too important to address uh, meaningful clinical questions. So, uh, Peter, you and Marco are the PI of uh, an important upcoming study, which is a master DAPT. Can you tell us uh, something about the difference uh, between this trial and other trials in the field of HPR? Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to explain a little bit more about the master DAPT uh, trial. Um, well, first of all, it's a all common high bleeding risk uh, patient trial, um, and we had uh, we enrolled 4,300 patients all over the world, in in Europe, South America, Middle East, Asia, Australia, and Japan, and um, um, it's good to mention that there is an all common high bleeding risk patient population that were treated with ultramaster stents, and if they were treated uh, successfully. And if the first month was uneventful, and if they were on stable uh, medication, they were randomized at one month. And in patients that were on OAC or on NOAC, so on triple therapy, the, the triple therapy was discontinued in the abbreviated arm, um, as you can see on the upper end of the slide. Uh, in the, and, and patients continued single antiplatelet therapy up to six months, which is also a unique feature in those trials, in this trial. If patients were on, on the prolonged DAPT, triple therapy was continued for at least up to three months post-procedure, and then uh, patients were um, con and then continued up to single with single antiplatelet therapy up to 12 months. After 12 months, routine care was taken, was, was installed. If patients were on DPT and not on OAC or NOAC, as you can see on the lower end, abbreviated arm, one of the DPT regimens was stopped and patients were con continued single antipated therapy, mostly uh, P2Y12 receptor blocker. 
if the patients were randomized with a prolonged DAPT, DAPT was at least uh, um, uh, prolonged up to six months, and then afterwards, patients went over to the mono antiplatelet therapy. And again, after 12 months, routine care was 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 um, prescribed. The primary endpoint of this trial was at 12 months and was a threefold endpoint. First, we looked at the global patient. We looked at net at first clinical endpoint. We looked at ischemic and thrombotic events. And if non-inferiority for this endpoint was reached, we specifically looked at ischemic endpoints like major at first cardiac and cerebral events. And if that was non-inferiority was also reached, we went over to the bleeding events and um, for superiority of, of the pro abbreviated arm compared to the prolonged arm, a major and clinical relevant non-major bleeding. That is our design of the master of trial. Peter, thank you uh, very much. This is a very important study to really specifically address the question about uh, uh, the safety and efficacy and the net benefit of uh, strategies, not just one stent over another. But Marco, uh, let me be provocative here. I have uh, understood that uh, in OSC patients anticoagulated, uh, you allow up to three months of triple therapy. So my question is whether this is still contemporary or you have any special thoughts on this uh, point? Thank you, David. This is indeed a great point uh, for discussion. And uh, yes, we strongly indeed believe that triple therapy remains a viable treatment option, given, if anything, the results of the pivotal NOAC studies. In particular, the only study which really disentangled the type of anticoagulation from the risks and benefits of concomitant therapy with aspirin is indeed the Augusto study. In Augustus, as you may easily recall, there was a clear signal towards higher rates of stent thrombosis in the very first few weeks after randomization. And in fact, in this single study, the p-value, formal p-value for a higher risk of stent thrombosis was not reached. However, if you put together the four pivotal NOAC studies, as we did in these recently published meta-analysis, you do have a consistent signal suggesting a higher risk, which is significant, of stent thrombosis, as well as a clear trend with a p-value of 0 0.07 for the risk of myocardial infarction. So taking everything together, I guess triple therapy is there to stay. And the critical question is really how long should triple therapy be to, optimized, to optimize risks and benefits? Right, thanks Marco. Uh, Peter, can you tell us uh, where uh, do we stand with the study and when are the results expected? Yes, certainly, uh, David. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to stress that doing these kind of st uh, studies is much more difficult than doing a stent study. DPT duration uh, studies are much more difficult to perform for regulatory issues. Um, but having said that, I think we are very pleased that we have randomized more than 4,500 patients and that we are specifically looking at an all-comer hybrid risk patient population, as uh, shown on uh, this slide. As you can see, that we have um, uh, an enormous amount of ACS patients, almost 50% of ACS patients, um, of which 11% uh, are STEMI patients and 25% are non-STEMI patients. We have one-third of our population has diabetes. And uh, if you look at specifically the high leading risk criteria, you can see that, that the majority of the patients, more almost 70% are, are, are at the age of 75 or older, and that the precise depth score is more than half of the of our population has a precise depth score of more than 25. And interesting, almost more than one third of our population is on an OAC or NOAC. I think these are really important data that we will kind of get from this trial and we need definitely more evidence what is the most optimal DPT duration and combination in HBR patients. And um, I think that we are uh, happy to say that uh, our results are to be expected hopefully at ASC next year. Okay, thank you very much to uh, the three of you. I think uh, if I have to wrap up this session and summarize what we have learned, we have a list of new data from uh, the HPR group of model USES, and we have learned about the design and the status of master DAPT, which is uh, definitely an important trial to meaningfully answer uh, the question, the important question about optimal duration of DAPT therapy in HPR patients. 
I would like to thank uh, all of you for participating to this session. I would like to thank also Terumo uh, for supporting research that uh, tries to address uh, meaningful uh, questions for clinical practice rather than just uh, differences uh, between the stands in this uh, specific case. I would like to uh, thank all the viewers for watching this video and please enjoy the rest of the uh, PCRE course.